Welcome to Deep Tech 315. Our first topic is, as expected, NVIDIA earnings. Uh, the company reported in line with the whisper number of 33 or 35 billion in revenue. And the guidance for the uh, January quarter suggested uh, that it would be about a couple percent below where the whisper number was. So uh, shares uh, sold off on that. Uh, the key number that I was looking at, I think that it's largely irrelevant what the results and guidance were from my perspective. What was most important to me was commentary on their call related to Blackwell demand. And uh, they, it was not only in the CFO letter, but twice they mentioned it on the call that uh, demand is higher for Blackwell today than it was three months ago and that they will be demand supply constrained uh, for the next several quarters, which puts you kind of call it middle of 20 calendar 25. Previously, three months ago, Jensen said that they would be uh, supply constrained on Blackwell as his exact language was into next year. So kind of presumably they pushed out kind of three months, which I read as a sign that demand for NVIDIA continues to be high. And uh, ultimately, I think that the biggest question here, the reason why that's so important is what's the growth rate in 2026, I feel is the, the central question here. I think that's probably right. I, and I think the realities of Blackwell demand shouldn't have been too surprising, given we just got pretty strong commentary from all the hyperscalers about them continuing to want to spend more on CapEx. I mean, Microsoft talked about being supply constrained themselves on the Azure side. Uh, Google's obviously still investing. Meta talked about continued aggressive plans. Even XAI, uh, a company you know that, that just raised more money, according to media reports, most of that money is supposedly going toward building out another cluster for AI training. So I think that that shouldn't be shocking. You know, the other thing I would talk about or think about at least relative to what that demand looks like is the scaling law question, which was, I think the yeah. first question that was Jensen the first question on the call. On the Do you call. want to give everybody exactly. a one-on-one on the scaling question? The scaling, scaling topic. Is, it, it's basically the concept that in the current uh, AI generative AI model building paradigm. What we have seen is that as you add more data, which requires more compute to train the models, the models kind of get better and better or you know, more intelligent, quote unquote, um, at a, a linear sort of relatively predictable rate. And the reason that this has become a question or an issue is so let me, recently, let me make, let me sure I frame that in. The more yep. data you put at it, basically the more infrastructure you have to add to get the models to be smarter. It has to be kind of this linear relationship between amount of infrastructure and how smart the models are. Is that one way to think about it? Uh, that is one way to think about it. I, I, would, I would just invert it slightly to say that the more data, the thought is the way to get the models smarter is to give them more data. Yes, more data, more data requires but more infrastructure. Why is scaling laws right. then important to the NVIDIA conversation? Because as is you it, continue to push more data, you need more you need compute more, to handle okay. the pre-training of that model. And so to handle more data, you just need more, you need more power. products. Makes sense. So and if scaling laws hold, that's a positive for NVIDIA. It is a positive for NVIDIA, right. but, but there there's a debate a about new it. dynamic. There's a new dynamic though, which is some questions about whether or not the scaling laws are starting to break down. So there were a couple of reports related to OpenAI and Gemini um, that based on some of the early, I think, uh, iterations of their next models, they didn't improve by as much as they would have thought according to what the scaling laws would have predicted. And so it's, it's been this kind of open question now, are the scaling laws breaking down? Are they dead? Um, Jensen on the call, he kind of addressed it. He said, look, there's, there's basically three categories that you should think about our products be useful for. One is this idea of pre-training. And I think he basically alluded to the idea that it doesn't really feel like the scaling laws are totally dead yet. Um, so that's piece one. Piece two is uh, essentially post-training or using reinforcement learning from human feedback after the pre-training phase, where in mm -hmm. some cases now these models are also generating synthetic data, which again, that requires infrastructure to generate the data and then do more training with the models. And then the third piece, and this is where I think it gets really interesting, is he mentioned that with uh, O1, 
GPT's most recent model, they're now doing inference, uh, time scaling kind of uh, for inference, which means that the model is given time to think and the longer it thinks, the longer it's running compute for that inference. And that's another thing that we might start to see scale now in a linear way. What, what did he call that? Time scaling or I've got time my scale notes. inferencing, yep, or inference time scaling. That's right. So that, uh, yeah, that was, that was a new one to me. The, what was his point about outlining those three avenues of scaling? Was his point basically to say there's a lot of forces still supporting the, the theory that scaling is going to continue? I think so. And I think he wanted to make sure that, you know, investors who, who maybe aren't as close to AI and not following everything that's going on know that, you know, it's not just about that initial training. That's not where NVIDIA products are, are solely useful. There's these other components to training that are also things that NVIDIA touches. And then there's also the inference piece that NVIDIA uh, touches, which I believe is now 50% or more. So was, was Jensen almost saying like, it's not as important. The scaling question is as important for us because we got these other things too. I don't think he was saying it wasn't important. I, was, I think he was trying to um, correct the uh, narrative that it was the only thing that mattered. Right. Got there's you. these other components that matter. And he, he does that too around when there's this talk that hyperscalers, they're eventually going to slow their investment. They probably, as a percentage growth, they're slowing their investment in, the, in, in CapEx and and there's this view that that's the end of NVIDIA. And then he'll he'll remind people, well, there's going to be application layer. There's going to be industrial AI. And then there will be sovereign AI. So there's these other tailwinds. So he kind of has a history of doing that. I think I put him in the category of promotional, but he's been promotional and been right. Every great CEO is promotional. Steve Jobs? Maybe the best promoter ever. Yeah, I guess, yeah, he was. Probably did it in such a subtle way uh that everything uh, was the most amazing product we've ever launched but they were the most amazing product that wasn't like it's still promotional promotional as a statement of fact it's i guess still it's promotional yeah it, jensen has a ground to stand on that the the demand is i think incredible i should go back and look at the over under on the word incredible on the the call i think it would have been over three Anything I think we should just to, to kind of wrap there, I'll, I'll bring us home on the NVIDIA conversation is that uh, continue to believe that, you know, looking forward, this is like surprisingly inexpensive in terms of a multiple of trades kind of in the high 20s on calendar 26 numbers or uh, that kind of on calendar 25. And so that kind of compares pretty similar to what Apple trades at Microsoft, uh, Amazon. And uh, I think that it speaks to, uh, that this concern, even though those other companies are growing at, call it 10, 15%, NVIDIA is growing at what I think will be 30% in calendar 26, the streets at 21%. I think it just, there's this, still this nagging feeling that the business is going to blow up. I keep reminding people the business was down 21% in the quarter before all this generative AI started. So I think that is uh, still a central question, like what's 2026 looks like? And I'll take the over on 2026. And uh, let's jump to the, the, the second topic, which is grabbing a lot of headlines this week, Department of Justice. Uh, they kind of mailed in their holiday wish list. Yeah, for, for Google, at least, to, uh, to separate Chrome. I mean, I think this is uh, probably a long time coming. I think the rumors about potentially Chrome and even, even further back, talking about maybe Android, too the Apple deal with Google, all these things have kind of been on the table as things that, that might get chopped. And yep. now and we and their Chrome investment in Tropic might focus. get voided. They, right. it was, it was ag aggressive. Yeah. Now it, it seems like Chrome is the focus. You mentioned the Anthropic thing. We can talk more about that in a moment, but I mean, I think Chrome feels like it's the focus. I think worst case scenario, you kind of look at it. Um, what could happen? Maybe something like what went on with Meta and Facebook in the IDFA days when Apple sort of changed how things were tracked. It had a, a near term impact on the business and it took Facebook about 18 months, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was for a $10 them to billion kind of dollar out. revenue, it, I think. Yeah, well, and they, but here's the thing with advertising that I think is the most important thing to remember is that. All of, all of the things related to tracking, all of the things related to relevance and serving ads, 
they're they're all a game as long as you have inventory and customers that are interested you will find ways to monetize that inventory it may get hit in the near term is the point that i want to make just like idfa with chrome right they have more uh, right. data about the user who is logged into chrome than users who aren't so there is a benefit good analogy on the side. but you know if, if that goes away i would be shocked if in 12 months google doesn't find some workaround that gets them almost back to the same place where they were i felt that the the loss here if it's highly it's unlikely it's going to happen this thing is going to be forced to be spun out but for me it was more about giving up the search share and call it uh, Chrome, two thirds global market. Google has 90% search share globally uh, when you exclude China. And uh, I understand the gathering of information is important, but isn't the kind of the real pressure point related to the Chrome spin out related to what happens to their search share? I think po I, possibly. I mean, that's going to be the narrative, but I think the reality is. Um, yes, Google is the default on Chrome, but people like Google. That's the other thing. It's, it'd be one thing if it was a substandard product that everybody wanted to switch out, but most people who use Google like it because it works. Mm -hmm. And so I think that as a base case, when you think about what might happen if somebody switches away uh, or, or switches Google off in Chrome and all of a sudden they're getting you know, DuckDuckGo or Bing or something like that, my guess is a lot of people are going to try to figure out how to put Google back because that's just right. what they're used to. And so could For there sure. be a blip? Yes. I don't think that it would be a permanent thing, though. On that same topic, on the browser topic, OpenAI announced this week that they are going to, or it's rumored, or rumored or announced on the browser? Rumor, I think. Still. Rumored. Big difference between announcing something and rumored. They are rumored to be working on a browser. Uh, so uh, I think it, it speaks to browsers are important. The fact that they are considering uh, rolling this out. My question is, how do they get distribution? How would OpenAI, if they come out with this browser, how would they ultimately get distribution? You'd have some download button when you go to the chat bot and, and, and kind of ride that rail? That would probably be the most likely way, the most the uh, most sensible way. I mean, there are other third-party browsers. There's Firefox still. There's Opera, these tiny, tiny browsers now at this point that have distribution. People just know the name and they'll go there and, and then maybe they want some specific feature that the browser has. Right. I think what OpenAI could do that would be more interesting is can they make kind of an AI native browser, an AI first browser, whatever that might look like and get people to try it in that way. You know, hey, if you want to adopt AI fully, our browser is the best one to do it. And here's why. That would be the wild card. Makes sense. And brings us to our last topic, which is somewhat re regulatory related, is Amazon at the end of the week announced that they're going to be doubling their investment in Anthropic. And the reason why it was a, initially a little bit of a head scratcher for me is that Anthropic and Google or the Department of Justice outlined that relationship is something that they may want to, to tweak is how is it that Google is under this uh, hyper microscope, and, but yet uh, Amazon can go and make this double their investment in Anthropic? Seems kind of funny. Yeah, I don't believe in coincidences either. So, I mean, I'm sure that um, someone knows something or someone's planning for something, certainly on the Google side, um, as it relates to their ability to keep working with Anthropic. Um, and then for Amazon to kind of step in, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know why Google might get treated differently than Amazon. Maybe that is it because they the have time. Gemini. Would that change anything that they've got? The regulators that, would that say would what be you've the got. Most logical argument is that uh, Google has a competing model that is has meaningful use, whereas Amazon really doesn't at this point. Although Amazon is playing around with its own models too. Makes sense. Well, it's safe to say is that big tech across the board is still believing in AI on multiple levels, whether it's through CapEx or these kind of investments, and uh, as do uh, the team at Deepwater here. So uh, more to come is an understatement on behalf of Doug and I. Bye for now.